Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. Today on Fight to Win, I'm going to teach you practically some more about how to walk by faith. You're not going to want to miss that. Also, today is offering day on the broadcast. And in our tactical tip, I want to talk to you about the clothing you wear and how it affects your ability to defend yourself. To succeed in life, we have to fight. That's why winners train spirit, soul, and body. We have to be ready. Not your typical minister, Kurt Owen left a successful career in private investigation and executive protection for the ministry over 20 years ago. His simple, practical application of God's Word will reveal how much Jesus loves you and give you the ability to fight to win. Now, get ready for a tactical tip from Pastor Kurt. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. On today's tactical tip, I want to talk to you about the way you dress because it actually can affect your security a lot and your self-defense. Um, normally for the show, I wear tactical clothing and stuff because um, one, we're trying to reach men and let them know that Christian men don't have to be wimps and things. Uh, it's part of the show. Truth is, is out there and every day, unless I'm actually training, I never wear tactical clothing out, outside. Or I, I, sometimes if I have to make a personal appearance or do a TV show, I'll wear it. Other than that, I never wear it. I don't want people looking at me as a tactical person. I also, I'm aware of the shoes that I wear. Even in my dress shoes that I preach in, most, 90% of them actually have rubber soles that allow me to run in them. Ladies, you look beautiful in high heels, but if you're ever overseas, if you're ever in an environment where it's a little bit sketchy, you need to take those things on and go to flats. Uh, your, the shirt, the clothes that you wear, guys, some of you guys in your skinny jeans couldn't run from anything. Ladies, some of your skirts, you couldn't run from anything. These can help, these can help you. By the way, when I carry a firearm, if you ever see me with an untucked shirt, it's because I have a gun. I don't like wearing an untucked shirt, but that's the price to pay to keep my family safe. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. Welcome back to Fight to Win. We've been talking in practical steps or practical ways in how to walk by faith. You know, in some ways, I don't necessarily look at these as steps. I just look at these as um, things that you do when you walk by faith, okay? I, I do think the one, and we'll cover this in a second, that the first one is the first step. I think it is the first step. But after that, um, I think you just need to make sure all, it's kind of like a recipe. You need to make sure everything's in the recipe, right? Um, and I've said a lot. This is the end of my second week teaching on this. Obviously, I'm going to teach about this all next week because we, we're not even close. I, I don't even know if I'm through I think I'm through two scriptures. Um, and so uh, if you missed any part of this, I'm going to ask you to go to YouTube, uh, go to the Fight to Win channel, subscribe, and then, or, and I'm also going to ask you to subscribe to the Kurt Owen Ministries channel. We are combining them, but I, w I would like you to do there because we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers so that we can, there's more we can do with the YouTube channel to bless people if we can do that. But we also, I want to make you aware of this. This is absolutely free. Um, we'll send this to you if you go to KurtOwen.com or call the number at the bottom of your screen. Uh, what we'll do is, is we'll send this to you absolutely free. The partners of Kurt Owen Ministries and I do that. This is the reason that I ask you to give into this ministry to make it possible for not us not to have to sell people the answers that they need. And by the way, today is offering day on the broadcast. And so I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you at the end of the broadcast, whether you want to become a monthly partner, which would be awesome, or just give a one-time gift. I'm going to ask you to give today, but we'll talk about that later. But part of what your giving does is it empowers us to give these things away. So there's 19 hours on here, okay? I think that averages uh, $6 a message. So if it was 20 messages, it'd be $180. So this is $174 worth of material, basically. And we'll be glad to send this to you absolutely free. But you need to really get what I'm teaching down on the inside of you. And even though I'm going to spend three weeks teaching on this, the truth of the matter is, is, is that I'm not going to teach you everything that's in this. And so please take advantage of this while it's available. What we've been doing is, and again, here at the ministry, we want this to be practical, that you can put this into practice into your everyday life. Okay. 
And so to that end, um, we've been teaching how to walk by faith. And this is the way we've been going at it. Uh, according to Hebrews 11, or excuse me, uh, according to Hebrews 6, verse 11 and 12, we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. In other words, what this is saying is imitate or find somebody that received and then do what they did. And then immediately in verse 13, it begins to talk about Abraham. Now, where we've been spending most of our time is over here in Romans chapter four, um, where it talks about and explains to us what Abraham did to walk by faith. So what we're going to do is we're going to see what Abraham did in his walk of faith. And then we're going to do that. Okay. Um, not to earn it from God, not to get God to help us, but because we believe that God is, has already promised that he already wants to do it. He's already accomplished it through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so what we're doing is, is walking by faith to lay hold of it. So we're going to start in verse 16. It says, therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but to those who are the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Okay. Now this is interesting here. Again, this is not necessarily something Abraham did, but I think it's something we need to do. We need to take a moment and realize that God wants to help us, that he did this so that the promise might be sure to all the seed. The promise might be sure to you and I. This is not just to the Jews because it does say, this is what it says, not to those who are the law, but to those who are the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. That's us. Okay. Then we get into where he actually, and this is the first step. This, and, and if there are steps, this would, this is the first one. Or if it is a recipe, then this is the first major ingredient. You know how you, um, you look on the back of a, a Coke can or a can or something like that. And it'll say sugar or something like that. Because what it's saying is, is that there's more of that in here than anything else. Okay. And, um, so as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In other words, Abraham's walk of faith started with a promise. He found out what God promised. Okay. You are going to have to do the same thing. If you have tried to pray and believe God before and failed, if you have been plagued with doubts, I'm almost guaranteeing you, you have not majored on the most, the biggest ingredient in the recipe, which is the word of God. Okay. Remember this. And at some point I'd like to teach on this, but I'm not going to right now, but I want you to think about something that Jesus said in John 8 31 that he says, if, if, and he was talking to people that believed in him. Okay. And he says, if you will abide in my word, you will become my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. See, a lot of times people believe that just because I'm a believer, I'm going to be made free. You're not. In order to walk in true freedom, you have to become a disciple. Okay. And Jesus explains that becoming a disciple is to have intimate knowledge of his word. Okay. We looked at another place over in John 15, where it says, if my words abide, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire and it'll be done for you. That tells us right away why a lot of people haven't received. It tells me why I haven't received because I didn't, I, though I, I, I'm saved. There's times the word I have not abided in him. I have not lived in vital union with him. You know, a lot of times people think just because you're saved, that you're in vital union with God. No, you've met. It's kind of like getting married, right? You got married, you went to the altar, you said, I do. You went back, you lived in the same house, but there are many people that went to the altar, went and said, I do live in the same house that are complete strangers. You're not really abiding with your spouse because you don't think about everything in light of them. You don't think about everything in light of who they are and what they are and what all they're about. And, and so the, the key ingredient is you've got to get the promise from God. Then it says in the presence of him whom he believed. We talked about this ne after, not necessarily next, but as a part of it, once you get the word of God, you need to get to know the God that gave you the word. Okay. So that you can have absolute confidence in the presence of God. 
whom, um, whom he believed. Now, at some point, you have to make a decision that I believe this. And it's not going to be a feeling. And it's not going to be that you're going to have absolutely no doubt. You, there's not ever going to be a time where you're going to sit there and stuff's not going to come to your head. Jesus, before he's about to go to the garden, to the cross, struggled with what his mind was trying to tell him to do. Um, if there's any way that, this, that I don't have to do this, let, let's do that. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. All of us, no matter where we're at, are, will have these struggles that we have to maintain. No, I choose to believe, trust, and walk with God. Okay? And that's what you're going to have to do. There, listen, um, I'm, I'm further along than some, not as far along as most, but I, I do know now that I used to think, well, they, they don't ever doubt. Man, they are just bold all the time. No, that boldness is cultivated and it's cultivated by when you make a choice, when, when doubts are plaguing your mind, you choose to believe, okay? So you find out what the promise is. You get to know the God of the promise. And I, if you go back and listen to some of the broadcasts, I taught you how to do that. Um, and in the presence of him whom he believed, make a decision to believe. And then we got down to this, God. And we talked about the fact that many people really have not spent a whole lot of time renewing their mind to the fact he is actually God. And we actually looked over here in the book of Acts. Um, we'll, we'll turn there right quick. Um, Acts chapter 6. Excuse me, chapter 4. And this is after they've been persecuted and now they've been let go. In um, verse uh, 23, this is uh, Acts 4.23. And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all the, the chief priests and elders said to them. So when they had heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, now they're getting ready to pray. They're getting ready to talk to the Lord about the persecution. But before they do that, this is what they say, Lord, you are God who made the heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is. What are they doing? They are magnifying him as God. They are reminding themselves that he is God. He is not a God. He is almighty God that he created everything. Okay. And so you need to do that. You need to spend time meditating on just exactly how big God is and how small everything is in comparison to him. You've got to remind yourself that when you pray, you're talking to the one who measured the ocean that took a drop of water in his hand and measured the oceans that took a grain of dust and measured the mountains. That's who you're talking to. That's who you're talking to. The one that spoke the worlds into existence, that's who you're talking to. The one that, like we talked about last time, split the sea with the wind from his nostrils, went, split a sea and they walked over on dry ground. That's who you're talking to. So it doesn't matter if it's cancer. It doesn't matter how uh, he could recreate every cell of your body a thousand times and wouldn't dim the lights of heaven because he's God. He is the God that can stop the sun and the moon. He is that God. He is the God that can speak and see uh, flesh and bones and, or excuse me, he, he is the God that can speak to skeletons and see muscles and, and tissue and bodies reform on them. That is who he is. That is who he is. He is the God that can take all of creation and fold it up with like a garment. This, this takes some meditation. And that, that's the reason we want you to get this product absolutely free. So for 19 hours, and listen, I don't want you to just listen to it once. I want you to listen to it over and over again. Get this down on the inside of you. Like we said yesterday, train in this. Train in these things. Okay? Now, um, 
And training again doesn't mean that you know it intellectually. It means you're actually putting it into practice. This is the reason I told you, identify your three biggest problems in your life and then get three scriptures that cover your problem. How are you doing with that? And remember, if you don't know your Bible very well, that's okay. Just contact the ministry and we'll help you to do it. Okay. We're here for you. We want to disciple you and see you succeed. Honestly, that's the reason we have this product, because I can't sit across the dinner table with everybody and teach you these things. And so we have these things so that you can sit down at your dinner table and get these things down on the inside of you. Now, let's get on here a little bit. That's everything. That was all review. So he says this, he says, um, as it is written, I've made you the father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God. Now, this next part, who gives life to the dead. Now, this is similar to him being God, but this is important. You don't have a situation God can't fix because he gives life to the dead. Many people in their walk of faith have convinced themselves that, yeah, you're big, but I mean, and, I, and I'm willing to go, you know, they, they're kind of like Martha, right? At Lazarus, with Lazarus, right? Lord, I believe even now God will give you anything you ask. I believe even now. And very religious and they're willing to say all that until the moment shows up where you're actually going to act on it. And it's like, hold up, wait a minute. That guy's been dead. That guy's been dead for four days. He's going to stink. Well, what happened to you to the whole point of, I think God will give you whatever you ask. You need to realize when you're standing there looking at a problem that looks so dead that they've capped the stone on it and said it's over, that there's been a death and burial, that that's how dead it is. You need to realize God is big enough even in that moment to resurrect that problem. My child have gone so far, they'll never come back. My finances are so dead, they'll never come back. You don't understand my boss hates me. You don't understand the doctors have given me an hour to live. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. God gives life to the dead and you're gonna have to wrap your head around that. Again, this, this is similar to him being God, but you're gonna have to look at your problems and say, this is nothing for him. He, when something's dead, he's just getting started. <laughs> when, when, when it is black and there is no, you can't see anything, he can still say light be and light was and spin the universe into existence. That's who he is. It doesn't matter if you're standing there at a Red Sea with an army at your back and the, the mo, one of the most powerful armies, if not the most powerful on, army on the earth of that day, it's, you're not done yet. You have nowhere to go. There is nowhere to retreat to, but you're not done. It doesn't matter if they throw you into a burning fiery furnace that is seven times hotter than it has ever been. You ain't done yet. We're just getting started. We're just getting started because the God that I serve gives life to the dead. You don't quit just because it looks over. I've seen, honestly, I've had this happen in my life where uh, I was believing God in particular for finances and I was believing for them by a certain day and they didn't show up. And there was a part of me that I'd been thanking God every day that I had it, thanking God every day that I had it by this particular day. And then the day comes and it doesn't come. And many times early on, I, I adopted the attitude of, well, I don't know why it didn't work. I know God wanted me to have it. I don't know why it didn't show up, but you know, um, I guess I've lost. I'll, I'll get up and go again, which is great. That's better than a lot of people have done, right? But then I finally realized, well, wait a minute. If I believe that I had it yesterday, just because that day has passed, why should I give up believing I had it yesterday? People say, well, because the day has passed. But I'll tell you what happened. I remember one time I began, I began to just thank God, Lord, I had it. I have it. And I thank you. I had it by this day. I had it by this day. And then a few days later, somebody calls me and says, hey, I, I need to repent to you. I'm mailing you a check um, because, uh, in fact, I, actually, I'll tell you one that happened recently. We were, we've been believing God with our next level project. And it honestly, it hasn't been going all that great. 
and but we needed ten thousand dollars by a particular day we needed to settle up one of our tv bills and um the day came and passed and though i i you know i called him said we're going we're going to pay you we're not going to we're not going to beat you out of the money but i kept thanking god that i had it by that time and then i get a phone call or a text said hey can you call me and i was actually out of the country at the time and um, they said, hey, the Lord dealt with me to give you $10,000. And, and I said, well, glory be to God. And I said, well, praise God. And, I, and they said, yeah, here's the thing. The Lord had been dealing with me for a couple of weeks. I was supposed to give it to you last week. If they had given it to me last week, it would have beat the deadline that I was under. Now, God was dealing with them. God was not the problem. God was the author of the solution to the problem. The person just wasn't as obedient. Okay. And I'm not slamming them because I've been that disobedient person as well. But I kept believing that I had it and that kept the faith pressure turned on the situation, not on God, on the situation. And it caused that person, they finally said, I just got all over me. I had to do it basically. Uh, And they repented and I, I don't have a problem. And we were able to pay it right now. I mean, problem is, is I got already got another ten thousand dollar TV bill. It's amazing how when you're on TV, how quickly those things come around. But the thing of it is, is what if I had given up and just said it's gone? But if God gives life to the dead, then even though the time has passed, no matter how dead it looks, he can still deliver because he gives life to the dead. Because going back to the other messages, he is God. So if you're looking there at the situation and the situation is trying to convince you to quit believing, don't stop now because he's still God. And he gives life to the dead. Doesn't matter what the doctors have said. Doesn't matter what the bank has said. Doesn't matter whether your home's in foreclosure. He's still gone. If you will dare to walk by faith, he gives life to the dead. And we're going to, I'll hit this a little bit later on um, when we get further down into some things that Abraham did. But I need you to stir yourself up and realize that just because it's dead doesn't mean we're done. Just because they've got me at the edge of the furnace and throwing me in doesn't mean I'm done. Just because they've written me off doesn't mean I'm done because God gives life to the dead. Man, that's powerful. God gives life to the dead. So just because you're in a hopeless situation, don't give up. God's just getting started. Amen. Now, Today is offering down the broadcast. And so I want to talk to you about some things. I want to talk to you about partnership. And honestly, a lot of my offering messages have just sucked. Okay. Um, the, because I didn't get into ministry to raise money. And you've heard me say that. And that, that's on me. But here's the thing. I believe in what we're doing. All every day when the calls and the emails come in about people like you receiving help. Man, that rejoices my heart. People all over the world are being touched, being changed. When we just went to France and we had 71 ministers show up and a large uh, limb were going to quit, but our partners made it possible for us to do, be there and have the meeting absolutely free. We didn't even receive an offering. We just wanted to help them because it was our first time over there since COVID. The, I believe in what we're doing and I, I'm asking you today not only to give a one time gift, but to become a monthly partner. Our bills come once a month, just like yours. And listen, I'm not just asking you to do this to help me reach the world. I'm asking this, you to do this so that I can reach you. So that I can, we can continue to put these broadcasts on every day. People say, why don't you do what you're teaching? I am. I'm, I'm, I'm believing God. I'm exercising my faith. But God has set this system up so that you or I and I into this together. I teach you according, like let him that is taught the word share in all good things that him that teaches. You're being taught the word, share with us that teach. And we can change the world together. I wanna show you this from um, Philippians. And this is in chapter four. And this is what it says. This starting in verse 10, there's a lot in this. It says, I rejoice in the Lord greatly. Now at last your care for me has flourished again though you surely did care, but lacked the opportunity. Now, let me say this about that. They were giving, uh, they, they had quit giving for a while 
And evidently they got stirred up to do it again. And they wanted to, but maybe they didn't know where he was or have an opportunity. And listen, if you're sitting there and say, oh, you have to understand I'm on a fixed income, then would you write us a letter? Would you commit to praying with us other day? But those of you who have finances, would you become a financial part of what we're doing? And notice what happens. He goes on here and he says, um, th there's a lot I'd like to say, but for the sake of time, it says, nevertheless, you have done well that you have shared in my distress. Would you share? And I mean, I, I'm, I refuse to get stressed out over the TV bills and all the other stuff, but would you share in this with me and do well? Would you do that with me? Would you become a part today in sharing in this and what we're doing. It says, now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, that when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. You know, they didn't say, well, somebody else will take care of it. I'm asking you to quit saying that. Well, somebody else will give, I'm not able to, or maybe it's not the right time. I'm asking you, would you make a choice today to become a partner, even if it's only $10 a month? If it's $10,000 a month, I'll rejoice, but I'm going to rejoice over the $10 a month. Would you become a part? I'm asking you to go to KurtOwen.com right now and become a part. Or if you're sitting there, I'm sure you got your phone near you. Would you text GIVE, K-O-M, G-I-V-E, K-O-M to 4577 and then become a partner today? I believe that you're becoming a partner. I believe that you're sharing with us in our distresses, doing well to do so. And so I want to pray with you. Come right back. If you've been blessed by this program, we invite you to donate and partner with Kurt Owen Ministries. Visit our website, KurtOwen.com, and become a partner today. Hello, I'd like you to become part of our Next Level campaign. We've been growing at an average between 2 to 5% a month. And we, part of our ministry is to call everyone that contacts us, pray with them and talk with them so that we can minister to them directly. Not only that, we give away all of our materials for free, but we're getting so many calls, we don't have the space to mail things out. And so I need right now, I need two buildings, two portable buildings, one that will act as a call center, one that will act as uh, um, production. And I actually need a third building for administration. I'm asking, not only that, that doesn't include everything that we need to put more, to go on more stations. Help us do this. Together, we can change the world with the Word of God. Would you do this? Go to KurtOwen.com and become a Next Level Partner today. I want to thank you first for being obedient to the Lord and sharing in our distresses. You're doing well, exactly as Paul said, you're doing as well to do so. You're doing well because you weren't waiting on somebody else to give, you took a part. And for that reason, I wanna pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for our partners, but those that are already partners and those that are becoming partners today. Lord, I thank you in their obedience, Lord. I thank you that they are blessed. I thank you, Father, that they have favor and opportunities. I thank you, Father, that they are increasing. And Father, I thank you that whenever they need prayer, I thank you that myself and our prayer team, you will wake us up and encourage us, whether in English or in the Spirit, to lift up their needs. And when they call in, we will have wisdom for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for becoming a partner. Come back next week. I've got more to share on how to walk by faith. And remember, Jesus is risen. Victory is assured.